Dueling Dialogues is brought to you by our affiliates at IX Web Hosting. Click the banner on the right left chronicles.com to get up to 40% off your first year of the best hosting on the planet. Today's episode of Dueling Dialogue is brought to you by Saucy Eva. Gma's marinade is coming soon to a plate near you to gourmetize your meats and proteins. Coming to you from that once forgotten artery that pulses through the center of the continental United States and into the heart of the Ozarks, Grace Matthews. Looking in from the northern border, our Canadian friend, along with his countrymen feeling the effects of U.S. political issues, Connor Murphy. Welcome to Dueling Dialogues, episode 97. I'm Connor Murphy here with Grace Matthews. Hi, Grace. How you doing? I'm doing great. How about you? Good. Yeah, it's uh, summer. It is summer. It is really summer here. We have been breaking records for the past three days. Oh, Heat wow. Heat records. Remember wow. last year we broke cold records. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, we, we just have to be one extreme or another. Well, this year it's cool. Last year it was hot. So we're kind of did the, the same thing. We, we did the reverse. Yeah, we've just traded places. Yeah, so I... I Wish it was a bit warmer out. Like it's been very windy and cool. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's why I was last year. It was terribly cool. So I'm I'm not complaining about the heat. And you got a new pool liner, so what a way to keep cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a good thing. So Okay, so it's a crazy day. What do I we mean got everybody today? comes back from these holidays crazy. Yeah. Well, Roseanne, remember her show, you know, we had this come back here where you know after what 20 30 years would they bring back the Roseanne show yeah it has the like the best ratings ever she was a Trump supporter her character was yeah in real life Roseanne is a Trump supporter there's also words being said out there and there has been for a long time about her being a racist and I, I've heard things that suggests she's anti-Semitic. I've never seen anything like that. However, she put up a tweet this morning that compared Valerie Jarrett. Now, remember, Valerie Jarrett is Barack Obama's former aide. I, I don't know. Former aide seems silly since she moved in with him and Michelle and still seems to be his aide. But Okay, she compared Valerie Jarrett to a Planet of the Ape character. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Now, this went down really fast. Now, one of her writers quit, like, immediately, like, at 10 minutes out from this tweet, okay? 36 minutes later from the tweet, they've canceled her show. Now, wow. this is kind of crazy. First of all, Roseanne is not the only person employed by the show. Wow. I mean, could you not do something else? I mean, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You are punishing a lot of people. Yeah. I and and I many would argue that this was her First Amendment right. It mm-hmm. really had nothing to do with the show. It wasn't on the show's time. Now, I think it was a very ugly, abhorrent thing to say. Well, yeah. You, you'd uh, think there would be something about free speech, right? Wow. Exactly. 36 minutes after this tweet goes up, they have canceled. You know, a major network show that had beat ratings. Uh, my understanding was that first comeback show was one of the biggest ratings, if not the biggest ever. In fact, I think when they first did it, they thought it was in the top five. And once they, you know, how they recalculated it, it was the greatest ratings ever. Well, maybe we'll see her on Fox. Um, you know, I'm wondering because this was an ABC show. I think Fox probably will pick it up. Yeah, I'm wondering now. But what about, you know, her co-workers? Will they go along with her? A couple of them are very left-leaning. But regardless of whether you are conservative or even progressive, this show was addressing all of it, which mm. I think is serves an important purpose. Right. There, I mean, Culturally. there was real-life really plots. There was real life plots in there. Yeah, and there were families that were divided. I mean, they had the one of her grandsons was black. Our, our granddaughter was black. The one of the grandsons had I don't know was a transsexual. I guess you would say or had sexual identity problems. 
right. or issues. I, I don't know if you even call it problems now. I don't, you know, I'm not sure what the PC term is there. <laughs> Nevertheless, you had it all, and I think that was important. It wasn't just about Roseanne. Right. So I kind of think ABC's knee-jerk reaction about something that is clearly, you know, about free speech may backfire on them. Yeah, I, I can see it. I'm, I'm going to call it right now. I think she's going to move to Fox. I do, too. I sure do. Okay. Okay, now, we haven't really talked in depth about terrorism, but over the weekend... There was a bombing in a Canadian restaurant. In Toronto, yeah. Yeah, it was clearly terrorism. And it has not gotten the coverage it deserves. No. Why is that? It was pretty much just covered up immediately. Other than right when it happened, I have not seen anything trending in the news about it. Now, I don't know if that's because if it, it like it was an Indian, you know, restaurant that there was no white people in there. I don't know. Maybe the, just the restaurant was shitty. For all I know, I have no idea. I mean, this was about to start happening. I mean, it, we've had numerous terrorist attacks with the vans and running people over. And yeah. and Absolutely. We, and we have just Because they're trending. <laughs> Yeah, we have Justin Trudeau out there, you know, asking for ex-ISIS to move here and be reintegrated back into society, which is a total crock of shit. crazy. I mean, first of all, is he a psychiatrist or a psychologist? Well, I have a theory of what's going on here, and I believe that he knows damn well that they're going to start blowing shit up in Canada. He supposedly puts this new arm of the government out there that's going to rehabilitate these ex-ISIS guys. But in truth, it's a $36 million budget to convince the people of Canada that they are needed. There's no actual rehabilitation. I don't know if they're going to teach them poetry at some point. I have no idea. But we have a lot of ex-ISIS now living in Canada. So when something like this happens, I think they're just doing the job that they were meant to do. Now, that sounds crazy. How could Justin Trudeau invite these guys into the country knowing that they're going to blow shit up and kill people? And that's because he is going to be poised to take more and more and more of our rights away. And pretty soon, we'll all be walking around with microchips. That is my theory. It's his own little army. Oh, wow. He knows they're going to blow shit up. Yeah. He knows it. And it hasn't worked out well for Angela Merkel who let a lot of terrorists in. In fact, she invited them in because they had a shortage of workers. Right. And it has destroyed their culture. I mean, they can't even serve pork at schools anymore because it might offend the Muslim population. Now, they didn't really give a damn whether it offended the Jewish population, okay? Yeah. So these guys get, they come in and they they set another standard and you have these leaders that basically bow down to it. Right. I mean, they're bowing to this culture and it's destroying nations. Now the United States of course has had enough trouble, but lately it's been Canada, France, Germany, and the UK and a lot. And, and those countries have actually been very relaxed in fact beyond that as like you said about trudeau they've invited the muslim population in right well and not I mean, just the muslim population isis yes yeah so known terrorists a lot of people just can't wrap their heads around why the leader of your country would invite known terrorists to come back and live here and there's got to be a motive, and the motive is to take our rights away. I mean, when the Parkland shooting happened in Florida, they took away a lot of uh, gun rights here in Canada, even though the shooting was nowhere near us. Basically, if you owned a gun, you're now open up to more people looking into your private data. Right, which is also kind of a little bit out of Obama's playbook because he would use certain crises to shock policy in a knee-jerk sort of way. Right. But policy, laws, and such are power plays. Yeah. They're not really about the people. Nope. 
No. They really aren't. No, but it makes me mad. Well, and it, it should, I mean, because also you would think that the, some of these leaders would learn from other leaders. Exactly. I mean, my gosh, German residents are, are getting raped. Yeah. The women are being raped. They had to close down public pools at one wow. point. You know, that's not right. It, no. It's simply not right. And it's it's scary you because it, it's starting to become, it's starting to be that no one is safe. Right. Anywhere. Okay, Trump is tweeting today. Uh oh. <laughs> I think it's very interesting because it's about thirteen angry Democrats. Now, I I was at uh, first I was like, who's thirteen? Who are the thirteen angry Democrats? The thirteen angry Democrats plus people who worked eight years for Obama working on the rigged Russian witch hunt will be meddling with the midterm elections, especially now that Republicans are taking the lead in polls. There was no conclusion except by the Democrats. That was the first tweet. The second tweet that followed seconds later said, why aren't the 13 angry and heavily conflicted Democrats investigating the totally crooked campaign of totally crooked Hillary Clinton? It's a rigged witch hunt, that's why. <laughs> Ask them if they enjoyed her after election celebration. <laughs> Okay. He is going after Mueller. Yeah, yeah. He's going to start naming names soon, I think. On the heels of the spy situation, you know, last week when we learned for sure there was a spy in the Trump camp. Right. The FBI knew about it. The FBI instigated it. Okay? Right. Now, the spin from certain media is that this was an informant, and an informant is different than a spy. Now, even the FBI admitted there was a spy until the mainstream media started suggesting that that might be an informant, and an informant wasn't a spy. So now you got all of this rhetoric, verbiage, definitions. <laughs> to me, it would seem that an informant would be asked the question, is Trump colluding with Russia? answer yes no maybe kind of you know there would be an answer there that would be an informant right. but going around and spying on everything he does reporting everything back then that is a spy that's not an informant or entrapment exactly there were incidents well, that's even of worse. situations where these a couple of these you know low men on the totem pole were entrapped i mean one of them was taken to a pub and gotten drunk. They got him drunk. <laughs> wow. And okay. he said stuff. He probably even said stuff that he didn't even know about. You know, I mean, not all drunks are truthful. Right. I, I, I don't know what makes someone think that alcohol is necessarily truth serum. <laughs> yeah. It could be nut job serum. Exactly. You know, it makes you more of what you are. If you're a liar, it'll make you more of a liar. If yep. you're a wannabe, like these guys clearly were, neither one of them had ever even met Trump. Exactly. Okay, so they were, it probably made them, you know, more likely to fib. Yeah. Well, this makes Watergate look so small, it's crazy. Well, yeah. You know, which, you know, Watergate was so stupid because I don't know, at least in this day and age, the RNC or the DNC doesn't really have much information on the candidates. I mean, right. it's it's kind of a joke, to tell you the truth, especially the DNC. They're so disconnected. Back then, I don't know what they thought they were going to find. Right. But it was nothing compared to this. I mean, this was planting spies and tapping phone lines. They had access to emails. It was crazy. The last time the FBI had spied on a political party was during the 1964 campaign with Barry Goldwater. Right. Okay. Now, I don't think they could have gotten too much because all you could do is wiretap, really, then. Right. And you didn't have emails. You didn't have, you know, any sort of digital communication, I, I would say that it was nothing compared to what they used with Trump. 
Yeah. And I think it's wrong. I think it's I think it's wrong when they let Hillary off the hook. That changed things. I think someone needs to go to jail. I do too. I do too. We'd like to see some sort of action somewhere. Trump has been responsible for 17 hostages being released in a year and a half since he took office. Oh wow. Is that not amazing? Yeah. Well, so he just released somebody the other day, right? Yeah, Josh Holt, a okay. Mormon missionary. He was freed from a Venezuelan jail. He's back at home in Utah. Holt was arrested on weapons charges. Obviously, there were no weapons. He's a missionary, and uh, <laughs> you know, in Venezuela, wow. much like other places in the world, they just make something up and throw you in jail for a couple of years. Uh, but he had been in the Venezuelan jail for right at two years. Wow. Okay. He was very happy to be home. He did have a visit with Trump in the Oval Office. Cool. Hey, and the president's daughter is under fire. She's being slammed over a photo on Twitter in which, of all things, she is cuddling, snuggling, whatever you want to call it, her two-year-old son, Theodore. And that's a big deal? Well, it is when you've got pictures roaming around out on the web of immigrant children in cages. Now, the rhetoric that was floating around with these pictures is that Trump was responsible for throwing these children's parents in jail, and the children were put into cages. (laughs) Except there was a problem with that. The Uh problem is the pictures were from 2014. It was the Obama administration (laughs) that was responsible. (laughs) So the mainstream media made a big deal out of these pictures, said awful things about Trump retweeted it you know it just got all over the place once they realized that these pictures were taken during obama's presidency they took them all down (laughs) if that doesn't prove there's a different standard you know obama could do pretty much anything right and they would still support him you know i would hate to be viewed as being that stupid yeah no doubt that you know that any man trump or I say man, any leader or person could make me that gullible uh, or blind. Yeah. I would be terribly embarrassed. I think the whole world was somewhat blinded. Somewhat. Well, the Trump, yeah. Well, the Trump derangement syndrome trumps everything. <laughs> yeah, true. That. Pun intended. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 there's no reasoning. There's no logic from these people. Nope. And you've got to wonder... Where is this going to end? You've got the midterm elections coming up. You've got the 2020 elections. It's scary. It's scary to think about where this might go. Yeah, it's so hard to predict what direction they're going to actually move in. I have no idea. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, We have an interesting situation coming out of the Supreme Court today. The Supreme Court refused to hear a case filed by an affiliate of Planned Parenthood against the state of Arkansas. Oh. The justices said that Arkansas can restrict how abortion pills are administered. Now, mm. I think that this is an important ruling, and I don't think it really has to do with abortion or Planned Parenthood. I think that keeping the states in power right. is important to the basis of how the United States is set up. Well, yeah, because Springfield is nothing like Los Angeles. Exactly. And, you know, it's like Ronald Reagan said, you know, the state should always remain that if you don't like where you're living, move. you can get on your feet, get and go, move, move yeah. to another state. You know, you know, unlike some of these people that are, keep wanting to leave the country, you should be able to find what you want somewhere within the 50 states even though we think california is crazy (laughs) they certainly have the right to be as long as they keep it within the confines of their state yeah and there's a lot of craziness in that state that's for sure yeah there certainly is but you know the people that live there are making a choice to live there true well john mccain is certainly in the last days of his life i think that that's well understood the brain cancer is taking its toll on him. Cindy McCain, John McCain's wife, will likely succeed her husband. 
This would be a gubernatorial appointment made by Arizona Governor Doug Ducey. You know, wow. at first I was horrified because, you know, John McCain's vote on health care really ticked me off. We really needed health care. He was the one vote that changed everything. We needed to repeal or at least fix Obamacare. Yeah, I was never a fan of John McCain. Well, and I believe his vote was emotional because he hates Trump. I don't care if he hates Trump. In a way, I don't blame him. Trump wasn't that good to him. But I would have thought that a man like him would have thought of his constituents and the country, the people first. Nah. I mean, he has a history of that. Yeah. You know, I'm hoping it was the cancer that was speaking. He, no. he said some things and done some things that he's behaved more like a Democrat than a lot of Democrats. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. For sure. And I, th- I think he's upset his daughter, Megan. She even admits that it, after the diagnosis, him and her got in a knockdown and drag out over some of the things he had said and done. Maybe Cindy McCain could set the record straight. You know, for his legacy. Well, um, I don't know. I don't know either. I think she is a little more liberal than him. For example, she has supported gay marriage very openly, even though he did not. Oh. Uh, there's been oh, certain okay. situations like that. So I'm, I'm hoping that this is a good thing. Well, let's give her a chance. That's right. We can't forget about the deadly storms that hit over the weekend. Yeah, um, horrible. Oh my gosh. Uh, there's a National Guardsman dead in Maryland. Uh, they just now found his body. He drowned trying to rescue someone. There are two oh. dead journalists in North Carolina. A tree fell on their car. That was Mike McCormick and Aaron Smeltzer. Oh, jeez. Now, experts claim that this is a once-in-a-thousand-year flood. However, Maryland had a once-in-a-thousand-year flood last year, especially Elliott Cot City, Maryland. Right. I mean, so they have had two. So, in theory, then, they should be good for a couple thousand years now. I hope they are, because it has been really tragic, really tragic. Yeah, how many billions of dollars in the last year has gone to just storm damage? You guys oh have been hit gosh. hard. Oh my gosh, you know, I, I'd like to see the total on that because it's outrageous. I think the last one I saw was getting a, very close to a third of a trillion dollars. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, and we've had a few since then. I got certainly this one. Yeah, yeah, you're 100% correct because uh, this one was not in any of the calculations because it hadn't happened yet. Right, so. and it's been a bad one. Okay, Starbucks, they're always doing something. Today's the day that they closed 8,000 restaurants for, and I'm quoting, real and honest exploration of bias. <laughs> okay. Now, meanwhile, customers are abandoning the tang because... There aren't any tables, and the restrooms have long lines. <laughs> wow. I mean, Starbucks uh, opened their doors to anybody that wanted to come in, and they didn't have to buy anything. They forgot about an important component. Yeah. The paying customer. Wow. Okay. So that's what happens when you have a knee-jerk overreaction to something that takes place in one place, and you had one idiot call the cops and arrest these two black men, yeah. okay? That was one person in one restaurant, in one city, in one state. And you did the knee jerk. Yeah, and now you've made a mess. Right. And it's going to cost you money. Well, you know, I like Starbucks, but, you know, when it comes to buying a coffee, I go to Tim Hortons here in Canada because it's a third of the price for the basically the same product. Oh, my gosh. I went the other day and ordered something. And I really haven't been in a while. I used to go to Starbucks every day, especially when I was writing, because I get that afternoon tired thing. Right. And sure, I can just go make a cup of coffee, but actually getting out and leaving, you know, my desk. Right. Talking to a few people, because you, you sort of get to know people when you go someplace every day at a certain time. Yeah. You know, but... I ordered a coffee the other day, a coffee drink, $7. I know, it's ridiculous. That's without ridiculous. a tip. Ridiculous. 
Yeah, I can almost get a pound of coffee. Well, a half pound of coffee for that amount of money. Well, yeah, that's that's about and good coffee. That's yeah, good coffee. Yeah, I make real good coffee. And so, yeah, I just I'm I'm not gonna do that. Mm. And a lot of people feel that way. So when they send me a coupon for a free one, I go get air, but yeah. I don't want to pay. I'm not that big of a fan. So. No, no, it's not that great. It doesn't have any alcohol in it. Maybe I'll just go in and use the bathroom sometimes. I usually don't pay <laughs> seven bucks for an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It better have booze in it for seven yeah. bucks. Yeah, they need to give me a shot of Kahlua or something. <laughs> I don't know. But Hillary's daughter, Chelsea's out gabbing. Oh, of course. You know, her mother's running around saying what happened, but Chelsea knows what happened. She <laughs> says Trump degrades what it means to be an American. Okay. So there you have it in a few words. Wow. She needs to tell her mother. So her mother quits running around saying what happened. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. Well, while we're on the theme of women that want to be president or people that want women to be president, they did a poll asking Democrats, this was for Democrats only, whether they would prefer Oprah or Michelle Obama for president. Hmm. Okay. They chose Oprah. And Oprah doesn't want to run. I have a feeling Michelle Obama will run. Yeah, Oprah. this is this is interesting. Maybe not if, next time. It's it's this is the first that you know this has started to creep into the media. So I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt the Democrats would would back Michelle over you know Hillary any day. You know. Well, I would back Michelle over Hillary any day if I was a Democrat. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Yeah. I would back um, a lot of people over her. I would, yeah. yeah, maybe not Roseanne, but you know, a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Roseanne would be interesting, though. Oh, you know? yeah, she oh. really, man, she really stuck her foot in her mouth. But yeah. I die your ass. Nevertheless, in the United States, yesterday was Memorial Day. Right. Now, you guys have some version of Memorial Day, don't you? Victoria Day, is that? Yeah, it was a week before, so it's, uh, right. you know, the, right. the day dedicated to our queen or former queen. And, uh, you know, in, in lieu of us giving them millions of dollars to support the royal family every year, we get a holiday, I guess. So, I don't know. I don't well, know. Well, yeah, and you I'm guys might need to raise it because yeah. they just had that royal wedding and they might be a little broke. Yeah, and they're apparently honeymooning in Canada because they're broke. You yeah. Know? So uh, they're you guys have to here. give them some free rooms. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Every time they come for a visit, it costs us a million. Oh yeah, because you got to provide all the security and stuff. Yeah. You bet. I get it. But anyway, we would like to think of those that have given their lives for our countries. Yes. And um, that's a fine thing to think about, just for a moment, is but on Memorial Day. Right. Uh, we we need to think of those that pay the ultimate price. I definitely agree with you there. Yep, but we don't always agree. But life's a journey, and we're all in this together. Remember, do not become anyone's victim. Thanks for listening. Godspeed, Connor, and Godspeed to all of our friends out there. Godspeed, Grace, and thanks for listening. Dueling Dialogues is brought to you by our affiliates at IX Web Hosting. Click the banner on the right left chronicles.com to get up to 40% off your first year of the best hosting on the planet. Today's episode of Dueling Dialogue is brought to you by Saucy Eva. Gma's marinade is coming soon to a plate near you to gourmetize your meats and proteins.